y'all welcome back to Enchanted Bayou if you are new here welcome if you are returning thank you so much for coming back love you guys around here and I really appreciate all of your support today we're going to talk about Lori Vallow Daybell what I'm going to do is before we get into the spirit box and try and reach out to her daughter Tylee we're going to go through the story and all the true crime drama and fun stuff because this is the doomsday mom is what she's been dubbed as but the story's got zombies exorcisms apocalypse all kinds of stuff that we're into on this channel so I'm gonna go through all the fun stuff of the story however if you have heard this story and you're very familiar with it and you just want to hear the spirit box I will post the time right here so you can just skip ahead to the spirit box session and listen in now I have to say that I have recorded this video a while back when everything was going on so it's been a while since I did most of this video I'm just gonna do an introduction and an update here for y'all but I have heard the spirit box and um, there's some very interesting things in there so you don't want to miss out on that and if you just want to catch that again here's the time go check it out and we will see you when we catch up with you the rest of us will see you when we catch up with you so to begin with we're gonna start 2001 now I can go back further 2001 seemed like a good starting place. Uh, 2001, there is this woman, Lori. And actually, let's go ahead and name off the characters in our story here. Okay, so there's a woman, Lori. She is the mother. She has three children. Her first child's name is her oldest son, and his name is Colby. You're not going to hear much talk about him because he's off with his family doing his thing and really wasn't around much. Then, Lori has a daughter who is 17 and her name is Tylee and she also has a son, an adopted son, who is 7 and his name is JJ. Then Lori has a brother named Alex. Then Lori also has a niece named Melanie and Lori has a best friend named Melanie. So whenever I'm talking about whatever Melanie, then I'm going to let you know. And then there is a writer who writes apocalyptic books that are like doomsday prepper kind of books uh, that's based around like the Mormon church and, and the, their philosophies and his name is Chad. So he's like when he enters in this situation that's when things just kind of explode. Okay so let's go ahead we're gonna start with 2001 now that we've kind of described most of the main characters. Oh one other main character. Chad has a wife. They've got several kids together. Chad's wife her name is Tammy. So don't worry. If you didn't get all that, there's not going to be a test on this. I'm going to go through and I'm going to break it down even better for you. So if you if you missed a lot of that, it's okay. If you don't remember all that, that's all right. We're starting in 2001. So Lori, during her second marriage, and she had like five, right? Which I can't say anything. I've had a couple. But anyway, during her second marriage, she has her son Colby. And he's from the second marriage. We don't really need to worry about that. There's not a lot of talk going on there. In 2001, she marries a man named Joseph Ryan. Okay. Now, Joseph, we're just going to call him Joe because that's easier. Now, Joe, he adopts her son, Colby, from her second marriage. So, this is her third marriage, right? We're on three. And with him, Lori has Tylee. And Tylee is now 17 as of, you know, our, our day and age, basically. So, she's 17. You know, things must have been going good with him for Lori to allow him to adopt her son. You would think everything's going good, given that she allows that. And then in 2004, they get divorced. Okay, so now you've got a baby and you've got Colby. Okay, now in 2006, we are on number husband number four. Lori gets married to a man named Leland Charles Vallow. And that's where you're hearing, you know, her last name come in all over the place, Lori Vallow. Now, he didn't go by Leland. He went by the name Charles, right? So, he goes by Charles Vallow. He has a sister, but his sister, her name is Kay. And Kay's child has a baby. And that is where JJ comes in. JJ's name is Joshua Jackson, but they just call him JJ. So, JJ is actually Kay's grandson, but for whatever reason, the parent, there's not really a lot that we know about that. You know, I don't even know. I couldn't even figure out really what is 
was it Kay's daughter, was it Kay's son, they can't take care of JJ because he is special needs, he is autistic, and they don't feel that they can properly care for him. So they go to Kay's brother, Charles, and his wife, Lori, and they talk to them about adopting JJ. And of course they want to do that. So now Lori has three kids, okay? So she has Colby from her second marriage, she has Tylee from her third, and now she's adopted JJ from her, boy I can't count, from her fourth marriage. So that's where all the kids, all her kids come in at. That was in 2012 when she adopted JJ. So things must have been going pretty good at that point, you would think, for her to adopt. Gosh, what would that have been? It would have been like his... I don't know, can't figure it out, I'm tired, it's really late. Let's get back to the story. So, things were going good in 2012 and they adopt JJ, okay? Uh, Colby at this point, he's getting older, he's starting to move on. Uh, in this, in our day and time, he's actually 24 years old. So he's a lot older than um, Ty Lee and also JJ. Okay, so then in 2015, things start getting a little crazy, 2015, Lori discovers the writer Chad and Chad like I said was writing about all kinds of apoc apocalyptic things and they were like fantasy books they weren't you know we need to prepare for this because this is kind of happening no they were built they they used a lot of the Mormon faith but then it also had to do from what I'm told I haven't read the books yet but it also had to do with preparing for the end of the world and everything along those lines, okay? So Lori becomes obsessed with these books. Like she just can't put them down. In fact, he has like one series that has like five books in it and she loves that series. She tries to get friends to read that series. She's really into this. Jumping up a little bit to 2018. Okay, we're actually gonna step back just a little bit. But around the 2017, 2018, remember that other husband, Lori's third husband, Joseph? And her brother, Alex, apparently Alex tried to harm Joseph with a taser gun. And so Alex has to go away to jail for like 90 days, right? And he's in there and he's writing this girl letters, maybe like girlfriend or whatever at the time, writing this girl's letter wanting to know all kinds of information about Joseph. Strange, right? I mean, like he's obsessed with Joseph, like Lori's obsessed with these books. Okay, so then he gets out of jail and we get into 2018. Okay, so in 2018, Lori goes up to St. George, Utah, where Chad is teaching like an evening class, and Lori and her friend, the friend Melanie, go to this class. Lori, again, completely obsessed with him at this time, and now her friend is starting to believe a lot of the stuff he's saying too. So apparently, he has some like near-death experience and now he has all these visions. Alex gets out of jail and then in April of 2018, Joseph, remember her third husband who is also Tylee's dad? Apparently there were reports that he was trying to get custody of Tylee, right? And we don't know if that's why Alex tried to attack him with a taser originally, but when Alex gets out of jail, He'd already tried to hurt Joseph, and Joseph dies of a heart attack. And that was in April of 2018. Things hadn't gone all off the wall at this point. So he was cremated, nothing was really thought about it, and we can't really investigate that. I don't know if they're investigating that right now. I mean, he's cremated, so they can't exhume the body and do an autopsy or anything. So we don't really know what happened to Joseph, although for whatever reason, Alex was obsessed with him. But, skipping forward. So you thought all oh, that was crazy, right? Here's where things get even more wild. And this is where like notes, my notes and stuff, pff, we're gonna have to like chuck them out the door because, oh my gosh. Okay, so Lori and Charles, everything was going good with them. And then, like I said, then she meets this Chad guy, right? That has all these visions and everything. And she starts telling her friend that Chad says that Chad and Lori were married in other lives. And so they were going to be married, you know, that that they had been partners in, in multiple other lives and that they should be together. That she is one of the chosen one to lead God's army of the 144,000. 
and that he also is, of course, too. But he's getting all this from his visions, right? A whole bunch of just crazy stuff happens between Lori and Charles. And Charles goes to the police and he says, they just came out with this video. It was amazing. He is standing at the police, well, with the police. And he's telling them that, and he even says this two times. He says that, that she's had a break in reality, a break in reality, and that she wants to murder him, right? So he's actually there with the police saying that she wants to murder her husband. And then he files for divorce. Okay, now he had a big life insurance policy, right? And it was like a million dollars and she thought she was gonna get that too, okay? Oh, she also tells her friend, get this, get this. This is where the zombie part comes in, right? Okay, she also tells her friend that Charles, she didn't call him zombie necessarily. That's kind of like a little iffy at that point. Not necessarily called him a zombie, but said that Charles was no longer in his body. It wasn't him anymore. And that he was taken over by either like Ned Snyder or Nick Snyder. Like a lot of reports say it's Ned Snyder. But then when I heard the... Uh, when he was talking to the police, when Charles was talking to the police, I swear he said Nick Snyder. So, <clears throat> we'll go with Ned though, okay? So, Ned Snyder supposedly has taken over Charles's body. And that's why that Lori wants him murdered. Because, I guess when one of the evil spirits takes over your body, you become a zombie. So, I'm just going to lay it out there. You become a zombie. That was their thought. Okay. Um, even though they were in a church, you know, in a church of Jesus where Jesus would clean evil spirits from people and then they would be okay later on. No, no, no. Not according to Chad. They had to be killed. Oh, it was crazy. Let me get to the crazy part. Okay, so even more crazy stuff, right? On top of her husband now being a zombie, Chad says that they can't divorce. Remember, because Chad's married to Tammy and Lori's married to Charles. Chad says that they are just not allowed to divorce their partners, okay? But he says he has visions that Charles is going to die, and then he has visions that his wife, Tammy, is going to die. And he actually tells Lori, and Lori tells her friend, that his wife is going to die before she moves up there. Because Chad and Lori were falling in love. Apparently, they have been married in all these other lives, and they were starting to talk about, you know, moving to where, you know, wherever they want to live so that they could be together. Now, he's up in Idaho and she's in Arizona. And so they were talking first about maybe he would move down to Arizona, maybe she would move down, or move up to Idaho, something along those lines. They hadn't quite figured it all out yet. Eventually, they do decide to go to Idaho. But in the meantime, while they can't be together, apparently Chad goes over to her house in Arizona and in her closet he sets up a portal so that she can go in her closet and go into this portal and she won't physically be visiting him but she can spiritually visit him so I've been doing like paranormal stuff since I was four years old and I have seen portals and spirits can go through them and humans can set them up but like this is more like a beam me up kind of Scotty. Like, I can't go set up a portal someplace and you guys come and visit me. I mean, that would be really cool. You know, I go set up a portal, tell you guys how to set up your portal. Uh, you guys can all come ghost hunting with me. I don't know how it worked, but that's what he told her. Okay, well, that's what he told Lori and set up for Lori and then Lori was telling her friend about it, right? So a little crazy here. <sighs> so they're not allowed to get divorced, but Charles has this $1 million life insurance and Chad starts talking to Lori about how him and his wife are having some financial problems. Well, we don't know what happened here. But then Charles, like I said, was telling Lori that she expected that Chad was going to somehow magically die. And he didn't ever die. So Chad had a lot of explaining to do, but whatever he said must have worked because Lori still believed him. And she believes still that Charles is a zombie, okay? Now, she thinks she's, of course, too, if he dies, going to get this money, which would be great for everyone. There was a little bit of suspicion that he might have, may have, put his life insurance in his sister's name. Now, we don't know why, because, of course, 
Charles is no longer with us. So this is what happens to Charles. So Charles goes down to Texas and he goes on a trip down to Texas. Okay. Lori is still convinced that he's a zombie. So she calls up her brother Alex and says, Alex, I need you to come stay with me. Charles is coming back tomorrow and I know he's going to come and kill me or harm me, whatever. I need you to come help me because he's a zombie. Alex, her brother, actually believes all this stuff now. And it's not like he's a young guy. I mean, this is her older brother, right? And so he believes all this stuff with her. And so he goes over to her house. And we don't know still at this point, still don't know if he killed her, what is it, third husband. But now he's over at the house to protect her from her fourth husband, who's a zombie, coming home. Charles does come home. And supposedly the kids were there and Lori was there and Alex was there. And Lori tells the police that Ty Lee hears Charles come in and he's mad and he's screaming and she grabs the bat and she was worried and she was going to go out and protect her mom. And that Charles grabs the bat from her, like takes the bat from her and swings it and hits Alex. And then Alex shoots and kills him. Okay, so that was Lori's story to the police. Now, Alex's story to the police was that he basically has swung this bat and in self-defense, Alex killed him, you know, shot and killed him. But when you watch the videos of Alex getting arrested, I mean, he's talking with the cop about, oh yeah, how do you wear, you know, how do you handle in, in the Arizona heat wearing such heavy equipment and everything and, and kind of just, you know, making light talk or anything. I would think that, I've never done it, of course, but I would think that if I had just killed someone, especially my sister's husband, in self-defense, that I would be really shook. That I wouldn't be talking about how the weather is right now in Texas, okay? Or in Phoenix or wherever I was at. But somehow they agree that it's self-defense and everything's okay and Alex gets let off and now Charles is dead. But she doesn't get the insurance money because he did go ahead and put it in Kay's name. So that's a plus at least. However, she was still getting money for JJ being disabled. She was still getting money um, from Tylee's dad. So she was doing okay. They figured she was making about 6000 a month just from different benefits, even without that life insurance. So that's where we're at there. So are you still with me? This is getting kind of crazy, right? If you need to take a break, pause it here. I completely understand. We can do like an intermission. Anyway, go ahead, pause it, take a break, because now we're going to get into the more complex things, the more date things, the more like detailed facts of everything, okay? Before it was kind of in a way in the past, so it didn't really matter where we were at, specific dates, but now we're going to kind of get in there, okay? So, hope you had a wonderful break. Now that we're back, let's talk about what happens after Charles is dead. So now Charles is dead. So, all this time, around this time, her niece Melanie is married to a man named Brandon. And Brandon thinks everything is going wonderful with their marriage. And then one day, Melanie just says she just wants a divorce. That's it, she's finished, she's done. Brandon is really shocked by this. And Melanie and him split. And then someone driving Charles's car with takes a paintball gun and tries to fire at Brandon. Isn't that weird? Why would you fire a paintball gun at someone? Whatever. Um, now, I mean, you're not gonna kill anyone. You're gonna leave like a horrible bruise, but you know, not gonna kill anyone. So of course, this is all really strange. Okay, so I know what you're thinking at this point. You're thinking it's Alex, right? Because Charles is dead, so now Lori has this car, and Alex has already, we think, killed her third husband, and also we know for a fact that he killed uh, Lori's fourth husband. But the police checked on where his phone was pinging, and at the time, he wasn't there. So we don't know who was running around with his paintball gun, shooting at Melanie's husband but he thought it was it could be someone from the group one because a strange divorce thing two because he kind of knew what was going on and some of Lori's beliefs because Melanie was starting to believe that too 
and he actually mentioned to the police that he thought this is like a cult that they were get, all getting involved in. Brandon's out of the picture. You don't have to remember him. He's not part of our story anymore. The niece, Melanie, she's mostly out of the picture too. Just kind of a weird thing right there. Except her and Alex, so Melanie the niece, and Alex the brother, and Lori, and the kids, JJ and Tylee, they decide that they are all going to move up to Idaho to be basically closer to Chad. Chad's still married to Tammy, right? But he's telling Lori that Tammy will be dead before she gets there, before Lori gets there to Idaho and moves up there to Idaho. So Lori and Alex and Melanie pick up the two kids and they move to Idaho. And you know what? Tammy's still not dead. Tammy doesn't die. So that was August of 2019. And now we're going into September where the kids have actually disappeared. Now, Chad is telling people that Lori doesn't have any kids, right? There's one report of that. Kind of strange. Lori starts telling people that Tylee had gotten her GED early. And so she didn't need to enroll her in high school. And she was off at college. And so I don't know if they were kind of hiding the kids at that point. Although one of the neighbors said that her son would actually go out and play with JJ in the neighborhood because Melanie, the niece and Lori and Alex all rented an apartment, like three apartments in this one apartment complex. So they could all be close to each other, right? The neighbor kids had actually played with JJ, even though Chad's going around saying that she doesn't have any kids. So I don't know if that report's true or not, because that kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. But here's what does happen is on September 8th, they take a nice trip to Yellowstone and Alex goes along and it's Lori and the kids. And that is, they, they take a really adorable picture, I'll include it here, of the kids at Yellowstone. After that day, no one sees Tylee again. Okay, we've got some new details that have recently come out that say that the police, this is from the, the police department, that they were tracing, they had traced Alex's cell phone to figure out where it was pinging and that on, that he had gone to Yellowstone with them and on the, that morning, so at 2.30 in that morning, um, the next day on September 9th, from 2.30 to 3.37, he was over at Lori's. And then at nine in the morning, he was over at Chad's house. And no one sees Tylee again. Now, Chad that day texts his wife, Tammy. Now, Tammy's still alive and doing fine. She's a librarian in the local town. That's what she's doing. So, Chad texts Tammy, and this is so creepy. He says that he has had a rough day and he decided that he would burn the limbs out in the back of their house, uh, like tree branches and things like that, that he was doing that and he burned those in the fire pit and that they, that he saw a raccoon that was, I guess, disturbing stuff and so he killed it and that he buried it in their pet cemetery. And so he texts this to his wife, Tammy, and that's the same morning and same day that we have found out now that there was a fire in the pit, burning in the pit, and we have found out that Tylee, I hate to say this, but her body was dismembered and then burned and then scattered, buried around the property. But this was like a cover story for Chad that he was telling his wife of why there would have been a fire in the pit and why there was also digging on the property. Then that's the last we see from Tylee. There's some reports that say her friend mentioned that while her friend Melanie was on the phone with Lori, that Lori was telling the friend that Tylee is now a zombie. And poor Tylee, she's in the background saying, no mom, not me, which is so sad. But Chad, I guess, told her, I would assume, we don't really know at this point that her daughter, Tylee, was a zombie. And now we know that Alex went to the house that night, then Tylee ends up missing, and Alex and Chad were both at Chad's house, uh, burning something in a pit and burying something. So then on September 22nd, Melanie, the friend, goes up to Idaho to visit 
Lori and the kids. You know, she asks, okay, well, hey, where's Tylee, you know? And Lori tells her, well, she's off at college, which is a little strange because she still thought she was in high school, not off at college, but whatever. Lori says, though, she got her GD and now she's off at college. And she sees JJ. Melanie sees JJ running around the house and doing his own thing. But Lori then tells Melanie that JJ is a zombie and starts to sh like starts while they're while he's playing around on things she starts telling Melanie like the you know the two ladies that are sitting there talking and she starts talking about how oh look at how he's doing this oh JJ want to do that look how he's doing this look how he's doing this see you can tell he's a zombie all right and Melanie's at this point she doesn't know if she should really believe all this stuff that's going on or not so she goes to bed that night okay JJ's a zombie and then she wakes up the next morning. It's interesting on this, okay? Because here's where two reports clash. Melanie has done an interview with, it's like East Idaho News. And on that interview, she was saying that she saw JJ and she went home and basically everything was okay. But the police report says that Melanie said that the next morning she wakes up and JJ's gone. And she asks Lori, where's JJ at? Lori tells her that JJ started crawling around like the kitchen cabinets, just being a zombie. So she called her brother Alex to pick him up. What we do know from the police affidavit, which is really kind of scary, is that Alex's phone pinged again over at Chad's house. Right after Lori unenrolls JJ from school, says that she's gonna homeschool him and then no one sees JJ ever again. So one of the kids, Tylee, basically ends up being killed, we believe now, on September 9th and poor JJ on September 23rd because they had both turned into zombies. And it was her and Chad's duty, by the way, to rid the world of these zombies because they were part of the chosen, 144,000. It was their job to do that. Now, most of the time that just meant that they would go into this portal that Chad created. Now, I don't know if it was the one in Lori's closet, but basically they, Chad had this portal and they would go into this portal and they would pray and they would come out of this portal and whether it was like another closet or something, I don't know, but they would come out of this portal and be like, oh yeah, we've, we killed, you know, a thousand zombies. Or, oh, we prayed and we killed a thousand zombies. So now a thousand of them are dead. Because I guess zombies are everywhere. There was a whole bunch in every state. She knew how many was in every state. Really creepy. So that's what happened to the kids. We do know that much so far about the kids. Let's get back a little bit more to the story. Now we are heading into October of 2019. And Lori rents a storage shed. And if you haven't seen those videos out, yeah, they're all over the news, but Lori rents a storage shed and her and her brother and another man, which they hadn't identified at the time, but now they're thinking it's Chad, are seen carrying really, really heavy, like, totes and everything into the storage shed. Now, at first, we all thought, oh my gosh, is she, or is that the kids? You know, because they were struggling carrying these totes. Later, the police raided that storage shed and it turns out that it was the kids' toys, the kids, you know, some of their clothes, special memories of the kids. It included, like, their bikes. So it was basically, they had put all the kids' stuff in this storage shed. Kind of weird, right? I mean, we're talking a couple weeks after the kids die and she runs the storage shed and they're bringing stuff back and forth from it. Now, remember when I told you about the shooting at Brandon? Okay, that happened on October 2nd and someone drives by in, like I said, in Charles's Jeep and shoots a paintball at Brandon. So obviously it's not gonna kill him. Was it a threat? Probably to stay quiet and stay away. But the weird thing about October 2nd is don't forget, Chad and Tammy are still married, and Tammy's still just doing fine and alive, even though she was supposed to die before Lori got up to Idaho. But even with all that said, and now her past husband is dead, but Lori gets on Amazon and buys a wedding ring. Then on 10 9, so October 9th of 2019, Tammy calls 911 and says a masked man shot a paintball gun at her 
Okay, so we know it wasn't Alex for the first one because, well, we don't entirely know. But the police found that his phone had pinged someplace else when the time that Brandon reported, you know, someone shoot, trying to shoot him with a paintball gun. But now, Tammy's reporting another paintball gun incident that someone tried to shoot her. So probably just to scare her and terrify her. You know, and we really don't know through all this, like, how much Tammy knew. Did she know Lori and Chad were getting together and trying to be together and all this other stuff. We really don't know. And unfortunately, on 10-19 of 2019, Tammy dies. Now, supposedly she dies of natural causes in bed at night and no one was asking any questions at that time. All they were doing was asking Lori, you know, where are your kids? So there was no autopsy and they buried Tammy. So that's where we're at now with that. Okay, then on October 25th, a strange text comes from Tylee's phone to one of her friends. And I want to get this right for you. It says, hi, miss you guys too, love ya. I guess the friend hadn't heard from her for a while and so someone, the friend did not think it was Tylee because it just sounded strange like she didn't normally talk that way. But she gets, the friend gets a text from Tylee's phone. And then on 11-5, now we're in November, this November 5th, and remember, Tammy just died on October 19th, and Lori bought her wedding ring on October 2nd, 17 days before Tammy died. And then right after Tammy dies, Chad and Lori run off to Hawaii and get married. That's just crazy. Also at that time, Lori starts telling people that Tylee died a long time ago. And Chad's still going around telling everyone that Lori doesn't have any kids, but that Tylee died a long time ago. Okay, so now we're at the point that Lori's husband is dead, and now Chad's wife is dead. And within two weeks, they run off and they go get married. And then in November, uh, in later November, it was around uh, November 26th, I believe. Kay, do you remember Kay? Kay was actually JJ's biological grandmother. Kay calls the police and asks that the police in Idaho go check on the kids because she hadn't been hearing from JJ. You know, she was just worried and Lori wasn't saying anything to her. And so the police go and talk to Lori and talk to Chad. And here's where all their lies start kind of getting a little peculiar. Lori tells the police that the kids are with her friend Melanie. And Melanie at the time is in Utah and it's right before Thanksgiving and she's going to be going down to Arizona for Thanksgiving. So another thing Lori actually said on that call is she told Melanie to go to the movie theater, okay, to Frozen 2 and there should be a lot of kids running around and take a picture of the kids running around and send it back to them, send it to the police, basically saying, oh look, JJ is running around with his friends having so much fun. So I guess she was supposed to go there and find a little kid running around playing that looked like JJ and maybe take a picture from the back. This is all the stuff that Lori was asking her friend to do. And Melanie sounded like a solid friend, but at this point she's starting to see that a lot of stuff is going kind of crazy. Now, she starts thinking too, well, where are the kids at this point? And Mel, or Lori had also told her that the kids were in danger, that Kay was going to try and kidnap JJ. And so Melanie thought, well, maybe they're hiding out somewhere. You know, maybe Lori had Tylee take JJ and that they're hiding out somewhere so that JJ doesn't get kidnapped. However, you know, Melanie said that, but when you start thinking about that, Melanie was okay with the whole story that Lori was telling her that she that JJ was a zombie and that he would be going and staying with Kay. So I don't know how she really explained to Melanie that it went from JJ's a zombie to and needs to go stay with Kay. She and Lori said uh, he's in the way of our mission and that's why he needed to go stay with Kay. To now all of a sudden it's like you know, she's trying to kidnap him. Okay, so there's a lot of questions going on at that point in time. Then we get into December, and on December 11th, the police begin to get suspicious about how 
just Tammy all of a sudden died and then like two weeks later Chad and Lori are off in Hawaii getting married right after his wife passed away right I mean it was like two weeks so the police actually exhumed Tammy's body So did Alex help Chad take care of Tammy too? We really don't know that situation. And I'm actually thinking we might need to do a spirit box talking to Tammy to see what we can find out there and make sure she's also okay. But then on December 12th, Lori's brother Alex, you know, the one who had taken care of everyone basically, well, taken care of, he dies of a heart attack. And we don't know if that's like suspicious or did he know too much? Did Chad do something to him? All we do know is that him and Melanie, remember the Melanie, the niece Melanie, not the friend, him and Melanie and Lori and Chad, they all went to Vegas and that weekend, which is really weird, or that, that little short time that they were in Vegas, the niece Melanie got remarried and Alex got remarried. So that was kind of strange. And two weeks after the Vegas trip, his new wife's 25 year old son finds him laying, struggling to breathe on the floor and he's on his side. And so the son actually calls uh, the 911 and says that it's his mom's boyfriend. Uh, so I guess his, her 25 year old son didn't even know she had gotten married, but it's her boyfriend, he finds him on the floor already having a hard time breathing, laying on his side, and then Alex dies of a heart attack, and no one thinks anything of it at that time, okay? 2020, January 25th. Okay, I gotta back up one thing a bit. You know how I said on November 26th, the police came to Lori's door, and that's when Chad called the friend Melanie, and, and were questioning where the kid's at, because Kay had called the police to go check on the whole situation. So Lori had said that the kids were with Melanie, right? So the police are like, okay, we're gonna go back and we're gonna, you know, talk to this Melanie. So they go back and they do their research and then the next day, November 27th, Lori and Chad take off and they take back off to Hawaii again. And so they're hanging out and spending time in Hawaii. Now January 5th, January 25th comes along and still, no one's heard from the kids. No one's seen the kids. Everyone's starting to get worried about where the kids are. And the police go out to the media and say, you have five days to produce your kids. You know, we just need to have them FaceTime us or something or, or just let us know that they're okay. If you're hiding them or if you're worried about them, whatever, but we need to know that you haven't just abandoned your children and that they're, they're okay. You know, Grandma Kay is worried, everything. So that five days goes by, nothing happens. Colby, now do you remember Colby? Colby was from the very beginning of our story. Colby is her first son, Lori's first son, and he's like 24, 25 years old at this point. And he gets on YouTube and gets on the news and makes a plea saying how much he loves his brother or sister and please, mom, you know, just, just show me that the kids are okay. And nothing happens. Nothing happens, nothing happens. And so that happened on January 25th. Supposedly she was, have to, she was supposed to have the kids brought to the police or shown to the police by the 30th, right? Five days. Then on February 20th, not five days later, like 26 days later, police arrest Lori and the judge puts a $5 million warrant on her. They're in Hawaii. They're, she was trying to get her, her bail lowered and when they wouldn't lower her bail, then she wanted to get extradited over to Idaho to be charged in Idaho. But right now, all she was charged with at this point was just abandoning her kids. And everyone's like, why are you doing this? You know, if you're really worried for your kids, wouldn't you be talking to the police saying someone's trying to come and get me? Something's gonna happen, I'm worried about my kids. But nope, she sat in jail and she is still in jail and that's where we're at now. Okay, so like I said in the beginning, it's been a while since I recorded this video because I was recording it when all the information was coming out. I wanted to get it out to you guys, uh, but I wasn't able to at the time, just had a whole bunch of life stuff going on. But there has been quite a bit of an update since this video and so I wanted to go on ahead and include the update here and make sure you guys aren't missing out on anything. So Lori Vallow Daybell, she actually went to court. She was found by a jury of her peers guilty 
for two counts of first degree murder, one for Tylee and one for her son JJ, and guilty on three counts of conspiracy, one for Tylee, one for JJ, and one for Tammy, Chad Daybell's original wife, and she was also guilty of grand theft. They said that basically she wasn't saying that the kids were missing or dead or anything like that, so she could still collect their social security benefits. So she is facing life in prison now. She has not been sentenced. She'll be sentenced in a couple of months, and we will just have to wait and see from there. But it looks like she's going to get life in prison, and I think she needs life in prison. So... That's the update. Now both Lori and Chad are being investigated for Tammy's death. Okay, as far as Alex goes, the autopsy does come back on Alex, so we do have this information. And supposedly Alex dies of blood clots in his lungs. Do we think it's suspicious or not? Because here's what I'm thinking on this one about Alex. I don't think Chad would have killed him. Clearly there was you know, his new wife's like 25 year old son there because that's the one who called the ambulance or he showed up briefly or something. But I mean, they would have had like sneak in the room or something and, and harm him to the point that he, that they thought he would be dying. Right. And then have this kid to find out. So I don't think they would have killed Alex also because he was doing such a great job for Lori. You know, you knocked off her third husband, you knocked off her fourth husband, um, you killed the, her two kids. He potentially killed Tammy. Quite the little yes man for Lori. So I really don't think that Lori would have let anything happen to him unless maybe Chad was like, okay, now Alex is a zombie. And so maybe they had some crazy plan to break in and like hurt Alex or kill Alex, which this whole thing's been crazy this entire time, so that's entirely possible. In June 9th, which is, you know, just not too long ago, June 9th, the cops get a search warrant and they start searching Chad's property and that's when they find the kids buried in the back. And so Chad, of course, is arrested, $1 million bail, and then on June 10th, the police say that, yes, indeed, it is the kids' bodies who that they've been looking for. So that's the whole story. I know it sounds crazy. It is crazy. I mean, we've got, like I said, from the very beginning, we've got cults, we've got apocalypse, doomsday, prepping, zombies. Now, I'm all for the whole doomsday prepping thing. I think you should be prepped for emergencies, you know, of course, but I live in Texas and we have hurricanes, so I think everyone here pretty much preps. But, I mean, this is just... Yeah. So with all that said and all the crazy story, I hope I explained it correctly. It's just been chaos after chaos after chaos, but I think we need to do a spirit box. And so the very first spirit box I want to do is for Tylee and try and talk to her and see what she has to say. Then if you guys are interested in it, then maybe we need to do one for Tammy. Let's go ahead and do a spirit box though right now. Try and talk to Tylee, make sure that her and JJ, that they're doing okay. For spirit box, I always use a PSB7 spirit box. There are newer, there are nicer looking ones, definitely, but this one actually works. So, I don't want a fancier, nicer, newer one because this one is amazing at doing what it does. I don't like the spirit boxes that cut all the noise out, so mine is very loud. So if you're wearing headphones up to this point, uh, you might want to take those off because it's going to get really loud or at least adjust the volume. The reason I don't like doing that is time and time and time again, if, if someone has recently passed over, they sometimes have a hard time talking. And so in that background static, that's where you will actually find their voices. Uh, lots of times they just come and talk to the mic. I don't need the, the spirit box, but the weaker spirits will use the background noise. And so I'm sorry for all the noise, but it's important to get their message across. And that's why I don't believe in the, the noise canceling spirit boxes, I guess. My two names you're gonna hear is Ethan and E. You will hear their voices in probably 95% of my videos. Uh, they always come through. They are my, what I call guides, what many others call guardian angels, and they will actually help us go and, or they will go and find Tylee's spirit to talk to her and make sure that she's okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Turn this on, it's gonna get loud. Not loud enough. I just want to talk to 
you. So I heard Ethan talking a lot. I, I heard E like that at the very beginning when I was asking for them, but I didn't hear that. But um, I didn't hear her much else there. So yeah, again, on those, I don't always, I don't like to say, oh my gosh, I heard this or oh my gosh, I heard that because, well, this story is fresh in my mind and I'm thinking about it or especially if I may be out on a ghost hunt and I'm thinking, you know, I want to see XYZ ghost that someone maybe told me was here then my mind is more likely to think that that's what I'm hearing. So I don't even edit these the night that I do them. I wait a day, maybe two, and then go back in and listen. I'm gonna shut up on that topic. I, I don't, she's 17, you know? And so I still think of her as a kid. Maybe she's several thousand on the other side. I honestly, I haven't asked really how that works, so I don't know, but I, she's, Ah, my son is that age, is like right around that age. So it's just to me, it's kind of strange asking, you know. 
a kid a whole bunch of questions. But if you guys have questions, then, you know, I'm sure we can ask them. So let me know what you guys want to do in the comments below. Um, that is it for me. I am going to sleep. It's been a long night. This was a crazy long story. Uh, probably one of my longest videos I've ever done. And uh, we'll just keep following it and seeing what what comes of all of it. I think it'll be interesting. Hope you're doing well. I'm going to have a whole bunch of new stuff coming out for you guys. I hope you really like it. And I love y'all. Uh, make sure you subscribe, especially if you've made it to this point. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.